Well, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the PhDJ podcast. This is Joe Bunn. That is Mike Walter. What's and, up, Joe? Uh, what's up, my man? Sorry How about the uh, AirPods today. I, I, somebody was actually using the studio, so I couldn't couldn't get in down there. So, well, you, last week um, you said you sold your mic. I, I thought you were. I thought I thought you were <laughs> falling off. <laughs> no, I gave it away. I gave it away. I thought, I thought there was an episode in Mash where where they slow, oh you know what it is they have to burn everything uh, for uh, fuel, for heat and at the right. very end like the sergeant or colonel or whatever is sitting in his office on the floor with his desk like on the floor and there's nothing else in the office they've gotten rid of everything else I'm slowly expecting to see that with you like, like no, the microphone no, no. gets sold and then and then you'll be on your phone doing this to get rid of your laptop <laughs> the computer didn't want to wake up this it's morning it's been a rough year man we're, it really we're falling has. everything we're off falling everything <laughs> yeah uh oh, if it man. moves it'll sell <laughs> <laughs> well a couple things number one i saw your post yesterday i think it was so are you saying yesterday was the four-year anniversary of the phdj yesterday podcast? we dropped our four our first ever ep episode we actually called it the pilot uh, and yeah, I, know right. you have a, I, I want you to go back and listen. I, I, I was just saying this before we hit go live. Um, yeah, we, I, it, at my first impression was, you know, this wasn't embarrassing. Like I thought, holy right, shit, right. this is going to be really bad. Uh, oh, and speaking of which we, in that first episode, we said we were not going to curse, but we also said <laughs> yeah, it was only a yeah, matter yeah. of time before we, we right, um, fell apart. Right. But so at first I was like pretty proud. I was like, you know what? This isn't bad. But then I also thought we really haven't come that far in four years. Like, like we already had a con I mean, you and I had worked together on the podcast, so I guess we already had that connection. No, on the workshop. You mean on, on the, the workshop. workshop? I mean, um, right. but yeah, I mean, we like I, it's it could have been like if you told me that was the 100th episode i would have been like yeah sure uh but the funniest thing to me was at the end of it i think you said so you want to do this again next week and i went yeah sure let's see and that and that to me has been the secret we really have never said we're going to do this for the next six months or the next year we've really just every week we go you want to do this again? And sure, you got an idea. You got topic for next exactly. week. Exactly. You got. A, right. And there's been a couple of times in four years where we were this close. I remember. I remember coming back from a DJ expo a couple of years ago, and you were traveling, and I was coming home, and you were like, "Man, I just don't think we have it in us today." And I was like, "No problem. We can skip a week." But I think you and I both know if we ever skip a week, then yep. it's probably going to eventually die. Other than saying, Christmas. Know, fine, but, Other than Christmas. Yeah. Well, I right, agree. but we plan for that. Yeah, I agree, man. I, I, I have to say it, it's one of those things where it, it's just like the old, you know, kind of uh, get the guys together. Like we used to do this thing or three families got together at the beach every 4th of July, rented a big house, you know, right. and then and, one year you skipped and it was it, we have not been back since. And I bet right. that was five years ago. Right. Like we, we right. went religiously five, six years in a row. And I remember even somebody older than me telling me, look, man, if you guys ever don't do this, it's the kiss of death. It'll and never happen. Right. Yeah. It did. Yeah. Uh, it's you super probably, sad. You probably see the post I put up every summer. I, um, 27 years ago, I got together with a buddy of mine, older gentleman. He was doing some legal, he's a lawyer. He was doing some legal work for me. I had no money at the time. I said to him, Bob, how can I pay you? And he said, you know what? Just bring a case of beer over the house. I love this story. And we got together in that first year, we called it beer day. And yep. then the next summer I was like, Hey Bob, you want to get together for beer day again? Yeah. It's been 27 years in a row. Dude, that uh, is and, and I see Bob at other times. Cause he and I are both <laughs> Met fans. We go to Met okay. games. I mean, in normal times, but at least once a summer I bring, and it's funny because the beer that first year I brought a, a case of Coors light and the beer has evolved through the years, you know, micro brew into this craft. Right. Sure. Exactly. But it's just always at least one. And you're right. If we ever skip a year, we probably will never do it again. So, and I think we both have that in our head that we can't skip a year. So we want to continue doing it. So um, anyway, yeah, kudos to us. We're always patting ourselves on the back because no one else yeah, will. Uh, but yeah, uh, four years, man. I think that's quite an accomplishment. So also, uh, yeah, cheers to you, man. Uh, also, today's National DJ Day, January 20th every that. year. Who, yeah. Is that a Hallmark yeah. thing? I don't think nobody got hey. me a card. I know. <laughs> 
yeah. <laughs> I was I was working on a post for it. Like I'll I'll make a post about it. I don't it, think Kelly got anyway. me a gift unless she's planning <laughs> no, on no. one later. I don't think so. <laughs> no um, party, no balloon, yeah. nobody at the office shot yeah. you like a confetti cannon at your right. face. And of all people, do you would think DJs like we would get our own entrance music and yeah, yes. and, and CO two cannons? Like of all, we know how we know how to do entrances and celebrations. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, so who 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 came up with that? Probably Pioneer. Uh, yeah. or, or Dan, <laughs> one it of had to be right. Treat yourself to, to a new controller. It's National DJ Day. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, it so makes cheers sense. to the DJs out there. Cheers to the DJs. It makes sense though, because Nam is around this time. So yes, it had to be. Oh, uh, I, yeah, I was wondering a, why it would be January. 20th. It had to be yeah. a gear yeah. person. Because this is also um, isn't January twentieth always the on, inauguration day. Uh, well, that's a good question. I don't know. Let's see. Inauguration. Is. So you're saying it's all it's it doesn't depend on uh, Yeah, I don't think it's it's always like the third Wednesday. I think it's always January twentieth. So um Yeah, you're right. The t yeah. uh, so why would why would 20... we have our national DJ day on the same day as <laughs> I mean so we're always that's so typical of DJs. Well, we it's only day, four years. We pick a day years. where we're always good. Yeah, that's true, but every four years we're gonna get I, I'm gonna use a pun here, but we're gonna get trumped by the news. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, uh, I guess, yeah, right. yeah, I don't so think three out of the four DJ. years, it's not. Uh, yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's okay. not going to make the. It's not going to make the news anyway. Right. Let's be honest. Come on. Right. Well, uh, anyway, uh, welcome everybody that's watching live. Welcome everybody listening. Uh, so I floated a topic to Mike that I just wanted to give kind of the uh, the the high level view of some things that I think are important. Um, <laughs> as I always use this term, and, and I think it's so funny, like as a 50 year old man, I'm still saying like, yeah, I, as an adult or something like that, as if I've just all of a sudden hit puberty. But <laughs> there, there are certain things that I feel like as a, as an adult, as a business owner, because I know we have people from different um, ages that listen to the show, different phases of their career. But there's some things that Mike and I wanted to just kind of um, relay to you guys over the course of our last you know 30 plus years of being company owners that we think are important uh in terms of <laughs> what are we going to call this episode like growing up or growing being up, responsible like yeah, yeah growing yeah. up uh i think djs are a little slower to grow up than the rest of of the well, the, the population yeah, yeah i would agree with that um, yeah. and that's okay like i i'm fully uh okay with that so Mike, you want to kind of kick one of your first ones off? I, I'm sure you've got a few notes there, or do you want me to go? Whatever. Yeah, that's fine. So, I, I mean, first and foremost, <clears throat> you you mentioned some of the younger DJs who we might have in our audience. And I know for you guys, you've probably heard this a million times. It goes in one ear and out the other. But I did not start saving for my retirement seriously till about 10 years ago. <laughs> and when I do the math and when I'm shown the math, that if I had started 10 years before that, or 15 years before that, how much more money I would have saved up and how sooner I could retire, I, I do kick myself. Now, I'm glad yeah. I started in my mid-40s and not my mid-50s like some people, but shit, if I had started in my mid-30s, I'd be a lot better off. So um, if, you're, if you're younger, if you're significantly younger than Joe and I, please take my advice and i see joe shaking his head so hopefully you have the same advice that's man. the first <laughs> just meet with a financial person it doesn't have to no, be i'm nodding my head i'm not shaking my head i'm nodding right, my right. Head. shaking your <laughs> head nodding your head you're in agreement uh, yeah. meet meet with a financial person it doesn't have to be a big gouge in your income it can be a very especially if you start early I mean, I put a significant amount away now every year because I'm trying to pile it away for mm -hmm. retirement. If I, mm -hmm. again, if I had started in my early 30s, it could have been a lot smaller of a slice and you and you stick it away and it becomes something that automatically gets withdrawn. I, mine gets automatically withdrawn mm -hmm. out of my savings account. Yeah. So I don't even have to Same. cut that check every quarter. Same. There's no Same. pain involved. Um, and man, I just, I encourage you to do it. Um, it's I know it's hard. And and again, I didn't listen to my own advice. When I was in my 30s, I thought, oh, I'm going to be a famous author by my 50s. I don't need to uh, put money away. Uh, but trust me, you'll you'll be thank. I, you know, there's a there's a billboard that I pass every once in a while up by in North Jersey that says uh, do something t today that the, your future you will thank you for. Mm. And and that's 
and and like I said, I started ten years ago, so I don't have total regret. At least I'm not starting now. But yeah, I should have started a lot longer ago. Man, I couldn't agree with you more, Mike. I, I'm the same. I was really late to that party. Kick myself all the time. You know, when I think about this podcast, I think about people. You know, again, much younger than us. You know, no kids, like a David Sporn. You know, that kind of age guy, like twenties, listening to this, man. Hope. Saving money, holding on to your money um, is something that I did not do well at all. You know, I was making a lot of money at a very young age and it, <laughs> it is not around anymore. Well, you um, know, I think and that, that is one of the challenges. Most DJs I know, we yep. love gadgets. We love <laughs> toys. We have to have the latest, Cars. greatest, newest innovation, everything Shoes. else. Right. And not just, yeah, you, like I'm not a sneaker guy. You're a huge right. sneaker guy. You've plowed thousands of dollars into sneakers, right. uh, probably tens of thousands, which is fine if, you, if you're, <laughs> but as long as that's, in, as long as you include in that budget, some kind of future savings. Now you also with children, hopefully you're putting money away for your boys college fund and everything else. And by the way, David Sporn is a regular listener to this podcast. So David, please comment when you hear this. My guess, you're a pretty smart guy. I'll bet you've already started your retirement or some kind of savings for the future. I bet you already have. You're a smart guy. Um, please don't prove me wrong on that, on that prediction. Um, <laughs> Um, well, let me let me touch a little more on money before we move on, Mike. A um, couple things. So I'm I'm a I'm not a Dave Ramsey disciple at all. Uh, I've listened to his stuff, read his stuff. I don't believe in that philosophy. A lot of my friends and DJs do, which is it's a little extreme for me. Like I just went and spent seven dollars on a coffee and a scone. Like I'm going to do that five out of seven mornings. I'm just that's just the way I am. But a person that I have not only had on the vault as a webinar guest, but uh, a good DJ friend of mine and Mike's Jason Spencer is trained under this profit first method. Uh, if you can get this book profit first by Mike McCallowitz, don't ask me to spell his last name. Just like I can't spell Shashevsky or even bear to look at him. But you can but, pronounce both. So that's <laughs> I can't. My, yeah. Mike, Mike McCallowitz profit first. Uh, it's on Amazon. Great book. It, it really, I, I don't want to say it changed my life, but it really helped me do better with managing money. He's a big fan of multiple accounts. So I have a tax account now. I have a, um, a personal account. I have a Bun gear account. I have a vault account. I have a Bun DJ company account. Like I was coming. And, and hopefully money. if you have followed the system and this, this <laughs> wasn't my notes, so yeah. we're both talking yeah. about this. You have a profit good, good. account and yes, that is, right. and that is one of the keys that I, I read that book, J Jason Spencer. I saw him present down at arm DJs a number of years mm -hmm. ago. And then I bought the book mm -hmm. and read it and adhered to it. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I mean the, the secret to that method is that you are specifically carving money aside for profit and then every quarter you are personally taking some of that money for yourself. Mm -hmm. Cause as a business owner, that's, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Um, and I love that. I love that. Now last year I didn't exactly have much profit, but um, yeah, prior <laughs> to COVID every quarter I would, and sometimes it would pay for Kelly and I, our vacation. Sometimes it would, you know, do this, do that. But it, it was nice to know that I had this account slowly building, week after week because i was putting a certain amount and certain percentage in every week yeah it is a great system it really is it really is grab that book it's an easy read i'm not a big uh, and reach out to jason that. spencer he's i know I he's about always, to say. yeah i i know he's uh, he's on facebook um yep. and i know he's always eager to chat with people about the, yep. the, the um, program and the system and everything else but definitely buy the book as well and you know you mentioned dave ramsey it's, it's funny I, I bought a Dave Ramsey book. He might have more than once. I'm not sure. Yeah. I bought a Dave Ramsey book probably over 10 years ago because some so many people had recommended it. And my right. problem was first 10 pages were all about religion and specifically yeah. Christianity. And sure. I just, I kind of shoved it away. And people have said to me since, Mike, read past that. His message is good. It's worth it. Even if you're not religious, even if you're not steeped in that. Um, so I, I had a problem and I probably should go back. But the one thing I do know about Dave Ramsey is, yeah. and this is a broad brush that I'm painting with, but he's anti-debt. And that's yes, something correct. I'm totally for. Now, listen, Kelly I'm, and I have I, a mortgage. I'm totally down with that part. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Kelly and I have a mortgage and I have a mortgage on my I office as well. But other than that, we don't car carry car loans. Awesome. We don't carry credit card debt. We pay our credit cards off at the end of every month. 
Uh, I like credit cards because I like to accumulate points and I I like the luxury of being able to buy things online and everything else. Uh, But I pay that credit card off every month at the end. I never pay the 22% 22% in interest rate yeah, yeah, right. wacky with. Right. Um, <laughs> so while I don't, while I haven't dug down on the Dave Ramsey method, like somebody like Jamie Bodie, who speaks about sure. it and, and is a big fan of it. Sure. I do think the avoid debt at all costs is something yeah. very Bravo. important. And I think it's something that our colleges need to teach at that level. It's amazing that when you go to college at 18, 19 years old, you can get a credit card, Damn but right. There's, but there's no one. there's no course or there there might be courses, but it's not mandatory to take. Yeah, that right. Teaches you what twenty percent interest does to your purchases. That right. I think is something that needs to be changed. Where the where college kids are taught early on the dangers of getting into credit card debt. God, so, such a great point, Mike. I, I just want to touch briefly on this, and you know, everybody's not going to be in this position, uh, but but. A home ownership, as big of a pain in the ass as it is, I just spent twenty five hundred dollars on a hot water heater. <laughs> we, uh, have a, we have a plumber coming this morning because we're having right. a problem with our kitchen sink. I, so I yes, spent twelve thousand yeah. last year on two new AC units, but I've been there fifteen years. I mean, I, I looked at my my uh, tax statement came from my mortgage company yesterday, mm. and I mean, I, I literally have after living there for fifteen years, hundreds of thousands of dollars of equity in the house now. Did I buy in a prime spot in the middle of Raleigh, which is consistently on a top 10 list of places to move across the country? Every single list that comes out, Raleigh's on it. So, yes, but I can't stress enough if, if you can own a home and sit, or even an office, which I've, I've always kicked myself that I've never owned an office. I think Mike has owned a couple now. Or no, you pissed away a lot on your last place. Yep. Yeah, and then you own this one, right? I have um, I have twelve mortgage payments left on my office. Wow, I, I am that's counting, killer. I'm counting down. Yeah, that is so um, cool, and I, it's a cool spot. My, yeah, yeah, it's a cool spot. I'm happy with it. Uh, yeah. It's funny. I was talking to Jason Janai this week, um, and he was, you know, he closed up his office and he's yeah, looking that, for the right? next move. And and I was joking around. I can't exactly do that because you know if he leaves, stops paying rent, they're screwing me. Right. So right, uh, right. But but I but I've been able to make rent. Fortunately, that PPP program certainly helped. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I've I've got twelve payments left. A year from now, I will I will own that space outright, and um, so awesome, I'm psyched man. about it. Yeah, yeah, I am too, man. That's that. I'm super happy for you. Ironically, around this time, yeah, was, I think it was this time last year. I do remember getting a realtor and going to look at spaces because that was kind of a, a 2020 program or a plan. And I mean, I was damn mm-hmm. close on writing an offer. It wasn't quite in the right space. The space itself was great. The location was a little farther than where I am now, and I'm I'm kind of glad I didn't just based on last year. I know things are going to reset, but I would have had you know an additional mortgage payment last year. Okay. Uh, but but yeah, I'll, I'll highlight oh, that ahead. fact. Home ownership. Yes. Um, I'm I'm living in the third home that I've owned in my in my life. The Same. first two that I sold, I did incredibly well. Now your Same. mileage is going to vary if you buy at the top of the market and sell low, just right. like anything else. Uh, right. But yeah, I mean, I, I've I've built up great equity in all three of the houses I owned. Two, two of them I sold for two, you know, for for pretty good money, uh, well over what I purchased. And you know, Kelly and I have some nice equity in this home. So yeah. Um, um, they say don't use home ownership as a savings, but right. you know it is. It's definitely a path or one of your paths towards towards building wealth. Without, well, a doubt. I mean, right, and it's always that thing that you kind of have in your back pocket. Like, well, if 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 it all goes to hell, I've got you know X right. amount of dollars in this house. Right. Um, I just want to touch briefly on insurance, uh, health insurance. I mean. I, if you obviously work for yourself, like a lot of us do, you know, you don't have another full-time job, please look into health insurance, do your research, meet with different people, different companies. I, I have a bad plan. I'm going to be completely on, and I pay a thousand dollars a month with no maternity, like, and it's, it's trash. I, I did not know that because I knock on wood rarely get sick and my family knock on wood has been very healthy. But when I tore my rotator cuff, they did not pay for it. And I was $12,000 out of pocket in December of 2020 in the probably the worst financial year I've had since I was a kid. So please do your research. You know, I, the, the question really that you need to ask is like, is this insurance any good other than for getting hit by a train? 
You know what I mean? And I don't think mine was. If I'd got hit by a train, probably would have taken care of me. But yeah, it, it amazes me the the state of our health insurance uh, in this country. It's, sad. it's, it's not it's political sad. because both sides no. have screwed it up. Yes. Uh, Obamacare didn't it's exactly fix everything, and Trump right. came in and said repeal and replace, and he did neither. Uh, we we got to get our arms around in this country. But I but I will say, and I'm not recommending this for young people who are listening to right. this. And when I say young, 20s and 30s, right. but I didn't have health insurance for myself until I think when I hit 30. Oh, wow. uh, so I rolled the dice in my 20s yeah, and did. a lot of young people do. And I'm not saying it's the right thing to do, but just understand this. The reason why Obamacare worked in theory was it was forcing people in their 20s onto health insurance who mm -hmm. rarely have it and who are the right people to insure because they're most likely not unless they do get hit by a train. Yes, you know, most good. people in their 20s don't have the health mm -hmm. issues that I have in my 50s and and mm -hmm. you know somebody else might have in their 60s and 70s. So basically getting those young people into the pool mm -hmm. was going to was was going to help everything out. So uh, I, I don't think you should be foolish like I was in my 20s and roll the dice, but mm -hmm. just understand that going in that if you're a younger person, you should shop around for the best possible please, uh, for please you do. because your likelihood of, of needing it is a lot less than somebody like myself. I mean, Joe played soccer and screwed up his <laughs> rotator cup. When you're in your 20s, that's probably not going to happen. You know? True. Mike, what uh, I feel like, uh, I'll say this about dental insurance, just briefly touching on it is to me, it's a racket. Like I've done the math a million times, unless your teeth are literally falling out of your head. Like the math just doesn't come out for like a, you know, once or twice a year cleaning, even, even on braces, like the math just did not work out, um, for us. You know, yeah, to, I mean, listen, I, 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 I've never done the math on it. We, I have a dental plan along with my okay. health plan, and what I like about it is it covers my three cleanings a year. Right. Uh, and I mean, when I had major work done, I had a root canal a few years ago. It oh, didn't wow. cover it, but it helped with the cost. Helped. Okay, okay. Pro it probably didn't help to the point of what I've paid in. I, you know, a number of years ago when I broke yeah. my leg, I remember getting the bill from the uh, <laughs> from the hospital. And it was like uh, $4,000. And sure. I said, oh, man, thank God I didn't have to pay that. But then sure. I started thinking about, no, I've paid into health yeah. insurance for so, <laughs> 40, so Yeah, I mean, when you do the math, right. But that's right. why they call it insurance. I mean, when you that's when right. you pay car insurance, it's the same type of thing. You're throwing right. money away if you don't get into an accident. But the point isn't to get into an accident and use it. So, right. um, I mean, listen, here's, here's how you know insurance is a racket. <laughs> I watch a lot of football. Right. There are so many insurance ads during the football games between Geico and I can't, I'm drawing a blank now on all the names, mayhem but, you know, the, you know, your mayhem guy. <laughs> and the only way you can put up those kind of ads is if you're making a shit ton of money. So that's how Great you point. know insurance wow. is a complete racket and they make a ton of money because they got a lot of money to spend. Yeah, man. I mean, okay, we got two weeks till the Super Bowl or two or three. And we're gonna we're gonna count that night, Mike. How many insurance ads come on? Right, right. And that, right. Shows um, you, that shows you it's a racket, but it is something that you need. Yeah, yeah. Mike, now, how talk, about life insurance? That's what I was about to say. Let's talk about yeah. life insurance. Um, again, critical. I think I even have two policies. You know, met with a guy, super comfortable, not pushy, not salesy kind of did a spreadsheet, did the math, you know, you got two sons, they're this many years old. Do you think they're both going to college? You're going to owe this much on your house. You know, he went through a whole questionnaire, if you will, and was like, you need X million dollars on this policy for, you know, Joe Bowen gets his by a train today. He passes away. Is your family going to be taken care of type thing? And I right. cannot stress enough every town. I don't care who's listening to this out of the, thousand people that listen to this podcast every week somebody in your town is a expert on life insurance mike oh, would you definitely. agree with that multiple, multiple. <laughs> yeah. yeah so please please do your research and and meet with these people it is in incredibly important you never know it's just, i mean like people say life's short you don't know when your last day is make sure your family is taken care of yeah That's if you're if you're a single guy and or gal and uh, you don't have a spouse and children, 
I, I, I don't know okay. that, especially term life insurance, I don't know the difference between whole and term, and I'm not an insurance expert, I'm so, not so either, I'm right. sure there are some experts that are jumping through the computer right now, but the difference is term um, is excuse me, whole is also a, a sort of savings plan. It's more expensive, but it's sort of a savings plan because the money that you're putting in besides life insurance is accumulating for you to use. Whereas term, just like it, the word is, you take it out for a certain term. And if you die during that term, you get the benefits. But if you don't die during that term, at the very end of that term, all your money's gone. Okay. So that's the difference between term and whole. Um, but you certainly don't need a term uh, program if you are young and no, have no dependents and anything else. But once you buy a house, especially with somebody else, yeah, I mean, that was the thing that Kelly and I, when we got our life insurance programs, we said, well, we're both paying the mortgage on this place. So if one of us passes away, the other person shouldn't be left with the burden of the of the mortgage. So, um, you know, I, I've told this joke on air before. What I said to my insurance guy was, I want I want enough money for me to take care of Kelly, but not enough to make it an incentive. <laughs> like yeah. I don't need, I didn't need, a, I didn't yeah. need a twenty million dollar policy. Right, right. Looking Same. at me like, hmm. Yeah. Let me right. cook dinner tonight, honey. Right. You know? uh, so I, I, I think taking care, and especially once you know, like Joe said, he's got the two boys. He wants them taken care of. He wants college. Basically, you you have to look at what your earning years are, and and be able to replace those if you die during your earning years. It's a morbid thought and topic but yeah. once you have the responsibility of other people it's something to, to think about uh, equally as morbid uh, uh please please especially really you should do this I, as soon as you get married i would guess go see an estate planner please plan out your will plan out your estate where is your money going to go if you pass where are your children going to go if you both go on vacation and the plane crashes over the bermuda triangle like Please have this stuff in place, guys. Like I've, I've heard a million stories from different lawyers and estate planners about, you know, money being stuck. I mean, it happened to my mother-in-law. She, her husband passed a couple, three years ago, Ainsley's uh, uh, stepfather. And, and she spent months, months trying to get his money or her money, really, um, because the will wasn't spelled out right or it had not been updated. Like it is so important. I think, Mike, we probably go once a year just to update it, make sure nothing's changed. Um, I even realized the other day when we had our meeting about it that uh, not included in there is like how you want to be, and this is a morbid topic, but how you want to be buried. Like, I prefer to be cremated. I want somebody listening to this podcast to come DJ. Like, I don't want this church service. But you need to everybody spell all that dressed. Out. Yep. I know. Like, that I want stuff a party. To be like, out. I right. want my right. damn ashes spread right. at the beach while somebody plays freaking 311 and Bob Marley songs uh, at the end of the pier on 22nd Street where my family's beach house is. Like, right. I'm going to spell it out. And so... I know it sucks to think about, but please meet with an estate planner. To me, the, the, the most, the clearest example of what happens when you don't have a will and an estate plan. <laughs> a, a few years ago, about a year after Prince died, I'm watching TV. And again, insurance ad, I'm pretty sure it was an insurance ad. And I heard, let's go crazy during an insurance ad. And I, or no, I think it was a credit card. I think it was Capital One. I hit the roof. I'm like, who? But. Then I said, I immediately said, you know what? That's Prince's fault because he didn't leave an estate. He didn't leave a will and an estate plan. He didn't designate somebody. So now his sister's in charge of his estate and she can do whatever she wants with his songs and his copyrights and everything else. So that's. And imagine that, guys. Somebody the, literally probably worth a billion dollars yeah, in, right. in, in musical licenses right. just. Never went, you know, right. too, too, and, and, too and busy. I blame, his, I blame his lawyers because at some point somebody sat, should have sat his ass down and said, Prince, right. we need, there's a morbid topic, but we need to get this on paper, blah, blah, blah. Nobody ever did it, but it's also partially his fault. I mean, he, he was an adult and he should have realized, wait a minute, I could go at any time and, and I need to lay out. So, yeah, when I saw, when I heard Let's Go Crazy on a right. credit card commercial, right. I said, Prince never He literally went, went crazy. No, no, but, no. Right. But I also said, but he brought that shit on himself. Yep. God, it's a great point, Mike. Yeah. Um, well, anything else, Mike, you want to add? This is a pretty good topic, I think. Let me pat myself on the back. Yeah, pat yourself on the back, <laughs> even, though I, even though I planted the seed. Too, so <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's it. I, I think we covered all the, the points I wanted to cover.
That's yeah. awesome. Guys, growing thanks up. for watching. Yeah, yeah. growing up. It sucks thanks doing it. For we we, we want to be kids our whole lives, but <laughs> yeah, at we some do. point we got to grow up. Got to grow up. Well, happy National DJ Day. Oh, Mike, so put you on the spot. Do you have anything to tease for next week? <laughs> I, I, I have a topic, but I can't tease it. I have a guest that I'm trying okay. to get on. Okay, I, okay, and, right. And I couldn't get her scheduled in time for this morning. Okay. If it's not her, it's going to be one other guest. So we're we're going okay. to have a special guest on special next week. Guest. Okay, I'm That's just trying to. I, I I can't tease it because I I couldn't get it planned in time. Gotcha. Okay, all good. Well, all everybody, right. thanks for listening. Appreciate y'all. Thank you, Ciao, Mike. Everybody.